When you when you step into the 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 Starship bearing or payload volume, it, it looks like a cathedral. It's, it looks absurd, frankly. It's like, why this is ridiculously gigantic? That's what, that was my first impression when I when I first went up there in a man lift and 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 climbed through the little hole for the Starship initial rough prototype. I was like, this. I'm like, what what have we done? <laughs> this thing is too. This thing is ridiculously big. So this actually can be great for science, though. Uh, so. One of the exciting projects that we're working with is with the Sol Pearl Motor at Berkeley on a, a telescope, a space telescope, that is able to use the that that what, what you, the, you need, it's, it's it's got an enormous lens. I think it's perhaps a seven or eight meter diameter lens, and it, it, it's actually a satellite that was meant for the, or, or a, a lens was meant for for a ground based satellite. But if you then take that same satellite and put it in 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 orbit. Its capabilities are greatly enhanced because you don't have the obfuscation of the of the atmosphere. So that, that's why, for example, the 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 Hubble, which is actually a fairly small telescope, can do better than I think any ground, maybe any historical ground satellite, especially in the visual spectrum. So so we're very excited about the, what what it can do for space science because because really at this point, especially for for any photons that where there's interference with uh, the atmosphere. So any any sort of short wavelength photons, you really want your satellite uh, to be uh, in vacuum, or rather your, your your telescope to be in vacuum. So that's really the future. So I think there's a lot of exciting potential there for planetary uh, for space science.